So let's start here. He made you alive in Christ. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. Okay, I've had some pretty hard days, you've had some pretty hard days, I've had some pretty low days. You too? But dead is about the bottom of the pile of human experience, isn't it? Do you go any lower than that? I mean, it's, you know, that's a rough day, isn't it? It's a pretty rough day. And here Paul is saying that you were dead. You were on the bottom of the pendulum, sir. In your sins. In them, wallowing around in them, and on account of them. How terribly naughty it is to talk to people about their sins. Do you know people? Do you know, people talk to me. This is a heckling church as well. It's a strange place to be. But do you know people who think you're being very impolite when you're talking to them about their sins? Yeah? So rude. I remember years ago in, in Gravesend, somebody left. The preacher is so rude. I thought, not consciously, you know, maybe that I got a gift, but uh, just not consciously have I been rude. I uh, eventually managed to get along there and you know, took great concern and so on. It turns out I've actually been speaking about sins from the pulpit. How, 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 how rude, how impolite. Naughty of us to talk to people about their sins. Funny though how when you've been on the other end of somebody else's sins, the situation is suddenly completely reversed. And let's talk about it. Isn't it? How many people realise what sin was about and what it was like and what it does? People realise that sin, you know, do you remember that advert, it was a cream cake advert, years ago? It's naughty and nice, do you remember that? Do you remember that? Oh, you're too young, that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's old crumbies who remembered all these things. And some people say it's as if everybody has learned to spell sin, F-U-N. Yeah. Sin's a dangerous business. It's a very dangerous business. It, it's killing people. In fact, it's not only killing people, it has killed them. Which is why they're in the relationship to God that they are. You were dead in your sins. You were. And in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. Sad day actually for, for, for continuing Christians, sad day for uh, mature Christians, when we forget quite the seriousness of a way of life in sin, and how serious sin is, and what it did and where it put us. Bad day. Paul's talking to these living people in terms that assert they were already dead in their sins when God made them alive in Christ. And that's because we can't get away from that one if we're to retain our gratitude and therefore our strength and security in Christ. People saw their sin as their killer, and that was their darling. Well, you know, you can tell me, would this be a, a better world or a worse one? It would be a better one. Paul's setting out the score then for these Colossian Christians so they can see the extent to which they should be grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the first step to get them to embrace an accurate idea of what sin actually is. You were dead in your sins. You, being dead in your sins, were made alive in Christ. You were in an ongoing state of deadness. And while you were in that ongoing state of deadness, on account of your very own paraptoma, stepping across the marks, in view of the uncircumcision of your nature, unset apartness to God, of the way you were living your life, of your lifestyle, while you were in that situation and condition, trespassing into areas of life that you should not, Living as the non-set-apart people of God. Well, that was the death of you. But while you were there, God stepped into your circumstances, stepped into your situation. <coughs> I've got quite a lot of friends, I guess you have two, who, who will say to you, there is no God. There's no God there, there's nobody there. Did you come across that? No, you obviously mix with much more godly people than me, which I quite understand. It's a good choice. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, that's what I was. You know, do you actually believe there's somebody there? Yeah. 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 Happens in the mouth on a Monday. But are you serious? Yeah, I'm absolutely serious about it. There is. There's somebody there. And they're saying, oh, God, there's somebody there. Why is there nobody there for them? Because they're in this state and condition where I was. Yeah? They're in this state and condition where their nature and their actions have killed off their relationship to God. So as far as God is concerned, they're as unresponsive as a body laid out on the side of the moor. They don't encounter him 
because they're dead to him. You cut off your ability to relate to God effectively, as effectively as death has cut off the body in the mortuary from its loved ones. God. And Paul is saying, you were there. And to get you from there, to make you alive from there, God sent his one and only son to bail you out of there. So that as he takes up your death in his own death on the cross and rises again to life from that death, he makes you alive again in Christ and all of a sudden there's somebody there. There's no more profound experience of separation than Paul's talking about. You were dead in your sins. You were dead in the uncircumcision of your flesh. Go through that if you want. But basically he's saying that nature and that set of actions both render you dead, but then God made you alive. It's not where he's left you. He's done something with you. Um, it's, a, it's a great compound word. God made you alive together with Christ. So that as Christ bursts the bonds of death and comes out of that physical grave, Together with all of that, you were made alive in Christ. He did it in Christ. And he did it by a particular means. The Colossians, says O'Brien, in his rather good commentary, he was the head of an Anglican college on the other side of the world. P.T. O'Brien, I'll quote you this in full in that case. The Colossians... The Colossians, says O'Brien, have come to life with Christ, who was dead and rose again. Their new life, then, is a sharing in the new life which you received when you rose from the dead. I get this bit because of that, right? Given that's the case. It is only in union with him that death is vanquished and new life is received. Only in union with him. And Paul goes on and he says, he did it by forgiving all our sins. It's all grace. And the way the Greek works there in that sentence is that it says this, Having forgiven all our sin, he made us alive with Christ. Having forgiven all our sins. The having forgiven all our sins is how he does it. 